Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for, I guess, tomorrow. Sorry for the delay. I had some family uh, business to take care of. Um, so we're a little bit behind, which is in a way a good thing because of all the different fights that have been added and removed from the card. If I probably tried to do this yesterday, even if I could, I probably wouldn't have been able to. Um, don't know uh, if I'm going to be able to get two videos out. I think I will, though. Um, I think I'm going to be able to do the kind of the best plays video now. And then we'll try to do a betting breakdown a little bit later. And then probably first thing in the morning tomorrow, we'll do a lineup build, if not late, late tonight. Um, you'll note that it is a 1.30 p.m. start, which is uh, very bizarre, but it is what it is. Um, so uh, if you do want to see the lineup construction video, um, it's uh, probably be out in the morning. But again, those types of things, uh, I do almost treat as evergreen content, meaning that uh, I don't know if anybody actually does this, but if you really, if you really wanted to get good at this, you would go back and, and look at past lineup builds. But I, I know how it goes. I mean, you want you want to have a, a lineup build video that it is focused on something that you that is actually actionable. That 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 is that sweet spot, and I'm continuing to try to work, you know, to make that uh, efficient. Nonetheless, very strange card this week because of the absolute absence of the mid-range. Um, partially because fights were removed and other ones put in and, and just some strange circumstances. You'll note when you just look through the, the, the salaries that there's missing, like some of these ranges that, that are normally in there. Like there's no 8,800, no 8,700, no 8,500, no 8,200 or $8,100 fighter. Um, of the 11 fights you have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them with a 9K fighter and then an 8,900. So eight of them are 8,900. And the reason for that is when we look through the, um, what you would call it, through the, um, through the odds, that's just what you're getting. I mean, like all these minus 300s and up, minus 300, minus 367, minus 1,100, minus 460, minus 525, minus 1,000, minus 800, et cetera. Okay, so don't blame DraftKings. You know, it's actually priced pretty, pretty well. It's just not what we're used to. So it's it's it makes lineup construction even more challenging than it almost always is. Um, and I am going to I have to, I have to do some saber sim stuff and some sims to see what kind of lineups I really want to play. Because we'll, I'll be able to tell you what good plays are, but I don't know if you're going to be able to play that many just because of pricing. So very, very strange. But uh, let's just kind of, I guess, get back to basics here. But let, let's let's actually, let's start with these mid-range fights. Or how about that? So let's just go start with the main event. So you have 8,300, 7,900. And the reason why I want to start with these is in the absence of good mid-range fights, of a lot of them, the ones that do exist are going to, you know, are, are going to come in a premium. In other words, people are going to want to play these, as will as will I. Um, and and with only a few of them to choose from, it, it makes it very important to pick them. And yet at the same time, it makes it very important to pick them, which means that other people are going to be playing them too. So it's very very tricky. But we'll just start with this main event, which is Gazia versus Rosenstreak, and it's eighty three hundred seventy nine hundred. And even though even though it's a five round fight, don't expect the five rounds to make too much of a difference, but it could, you know? And, and when you look at the inside the distance line here, I mean, it's obviously really strong for both fighters. You have Rosenstreet plus 160 inside, Gaziev minus 125 inside. Both those, both those inside the distance props are extremely elite for this price tag. Not to mention the fact that, you know, it, it, it could go five rounds. When you look at some of Rosenstreet's fights, um, uh, with Curtis Blades was three rounds. Cyril Gann, he went five full rounds with Cyril Gann. He KO'd Alistair Overeem in the fifth round. As a matter of fact, I mean, I think if anybody is going to have maybe something to prove as far as going five rounds, it would be Gazia. I mean, he hasn't really ever done that. Um, but Gaziev has some takedowns, which which will benefit 
from the extra five, the extra rounds if he can fact last through them. So I have to say that on a card that doesn't have a lot of mid range, I, I'm going to find it very difficult to fade this fight. I honestly, it, it's it just makes so many other lineups work and and, and the metrics are too strong. I, I don't know what to do because the ownership is going to be through the roof. I imagine. Again, fortunately, I haven't really absorbed too much content this week, but how how could it not? be extremely popular. Now, again, one thing you can do, and we'll get to some of this in the lineup construction video, is you can play the Rosen streak side, and then you leave 400 on the table. And, and the, the reason you do that is to kind of trick the optimizer players, you know, that, that if somebody plays like 150 and the rest of their lineup leaves, you know, as 8,300 left, the optimizer is almost always going to give you Gaziev because he's going to have a higher median projection. Um, so, uh, if you play Rosen streak with lineups that could have otherwise played Gaziev, you're going to get a little bit more unique than if you just played the normal Rosen streak lineups, which are going to be probably pr really chalky. So that's one bit of advice that I can give you if I don't get to it in the, in the lineup construction video. Um, I guess let's do the other mid range fights. Cause you don't, you have to sort of play all these because none of them, uh, <laughs> none else exists. Let's look at, um, Let's look at the one that got added first. Um, that Oliveira versus so Sopaj from from Sweden, I think. It's eighty six hundred versus seventy six hundred, and you look at the inside the distance line. You have well, first of all, do you have like incredible money line odds in in Sopaj? I mean, he's, he's plus one hundred five, and he's being priced at seventy six hundred. I mean pretty strong play normally i would say it's such a strong play that you want to play oliviera because he'll be low owned and you'll get leverage but he's not going to be low on either I mean, he's 8600 on a slate with no mid-range and you look at this this the inside the distance lines here you have oliviera plus 140 which is pretty freaking good I mean, it's not a leader or anything like that but considering again the absence of a good mid-range and it's a really really strong line so both of these fighters are say locks, but how, how, again, how do you not play this fight in, in, in the absence of really good underdogs? And we're going to get to them. You're, you're talking about plus 400 underdogs, except for a couple of these key fights. It's just not likely that they win. So getting wins are at a premium here. So, so the, the, the mid range underdogs are just extremely important to try to get to. And, and here you have huge money line values. So, B both of these fighters, again, are just you just kind of forced to play in the thing. And and then what is there? Like one other, and then the other mid range fight, you're gonna have um, what was it? Uh, okay, Al Hus Al Sawadi and Loic Rajabov. You have seventy four hundred, seventy eight hundred, and if I'm not mistaken. I mean, even if it didn't have a good inside the distance line, you'd probably want to play it. But let's see. But even still, you have what do you got here? I mean, Razabov inside is plus three twenty five. Right? That's not good. All right, that's fine. So, and Al Sawadi inside is plus two thirty. So th these actually money line odds are not these these uh, inside the distance lines are not good. Um, However, before you go ahead and fade these things, both these fighters have big wrestling upside. So uh, the wrestling upside doesn't completely overwhelm the inside the distance line issue, but certainly offsets it. Once again, in the absence of any good mid-range, of any mid-range fights at all, there's just, you just have to prioritize this fight. So either of these fighters Made sense. You know, Razabov, Abdul, Karim Al Sawadi. Let's look at the prices, I guess. See if there's okay. So Al Sawadi, 8,400. I guess that's I guess that's good line value, I suppose. At only 8,400. He's minus 180. But Razabov with his takedowns, I mean, he had 11 takedowns two fights ago. Uh, I I I guess I give him a pass against Rebecca. Rebecca's a beast. Um so those three fights, you just kind of have to play it. I think 
So if you really want to set something up, you'll play. I'll just put them out here. You put. We get uh, Rosen Streak, or I'll put all I'll put all six guys. In. I mean, you can just pick, and you'll see that when lineup construction, you know, when you start actually playing guys, um, and building lineups, it becomes you'll see you'll see what happens. But you play all six of these guys. Listen, you'll play all of them, obviously. Um, and that's actually an interesting point. Uh, question: Do, do you want to play a fight stack here? Um, I mean, normally no, but unless you get one of these big underdogs to, to win, what, what ends up happening is you either get, you either get, um, constructions with like three mid range fighters. Like, let me, let me just, let me just give you an example of what could happen here. So let's even take the, 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 the cheapest of all of these. So if you play the three cheapest of the mid-range guys, the three underdogs, you still can't get <laughs> to, to favorites because only one of them is 8,900 or below. You can't play this. So you're going to have to play one of these, you know, at least one of these fighters that have a five plus 500 to win. So the question is, are are the is the lineup that hits optimal going to be uh well obviously one of those underdogs wins they're huge favorites being the optimal but what if all the big favorites win well what ends up happening is that the optimal lineup either becomes somebody with a losing you know, fighter in there and um or someone that puts in a fight stack where you don't play those underdogs um so let's just say I mean, we haven't gotten into these fights yet, but let's just say you, you want to play out in Makai or Katrina, whatever. Um, and then you have one more to go. You could maybe do a fight stack of this of this Sopage Oliveira fight. And this way you don't have to play any of those guys underneath 7,400 that are plus 400 away or whatever. So we'll, 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 we'll again, this is usually not the way you play GPPs. Because you just don't get the ceiling out of two fighters like that, but you're going to get a a card where you have that's very unlikely. That's unlikely, but it's less likely that the underdogs win. Maybe that's something you should do, and we'll talk about that when we when we do some lineup construction. But I have to say that how, how do you not how do you not play some of your lineups that look a little like what I just kind of set up there? Anyway, let's let's. Let's try to talk about even prioritize some of these big favorites because the unfortunate reality is that a lot of them don't even have the greatest metrics in the world. So in other words, if you're going to play like the big favorites that are supposed to win, you know, and then you're going to put an underdog with them that may, that, that might lose, you know, the, you need to have a big ceiling out of these 9,500 hour guys and, and we look through some of these. I don't know. Let's let's look at this. We'll first look at the one that I think everybody kind of wants to play for some reason. That's Christian Leroy Duncan. So he he's minus three hundred, and he's the cheapest of all these guys. And I guess his inside the distance line is minus one thirty. I guess it's a good inside the distance line for him. I mean, boy, oh boy, is this really going to get there? It's just this easy. I mean, he's not really that aggressive a fighter. I mean, the, the, the narrative for how this fight's supposed to how this fight's supposed to go, I guess, is that Rivera comes out hot. And if Leroy Duncan survives, then he can maybe get him out of there in the second or third round, but is that good enough? Is getting him out of there in the second or third round good enough? I guess, I guess it's gonna have to be. Um now, one thing I will say also is that if Leroy Duncan is the cheapest of these minus 300s, probably easier to get him in, which means that he's probably going to be pretty popular, which means that we should be looking at the opponent. So in this case, Ribeiro's inside the distance at plus 300. I mean, first of all, you don't even, I don't even want to be greedy with, with underdogs. here. You can get any of them to win, that's great, but certainly couldn't hurt. The fact that his money line is pretty darn close to his inside the distance line anyway. 
So I think if we were going to play the, the, the big underdogs, I think you'd have to start with Ribeiro. He's probably the best. Then the other Javid Basharat, he's like, he's like minus 10 million. And, and his, his inside the distance line is what? Um, well, let's look at his price. He's 9,500. And you look at his inside the distance line, it's, 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 it's like atrocious. It's like plus 200. And yes, he's got a lot of takedown upside, but 9,500. I mean, you, you, you got to really, you got to really put the hammer on, you know, if you're going to rely on a whole bunch of takedowns, it's got to be a whole bunch of takedowns plus a whole bunch of ground impacts. You know, it's not that, you know, it's not just getting the takedowns. And when you look at him, he doesn't exactly, you know, rack up fantasy points. I mean, even when he, Gets these takedowns, three takedowns, two take. I mean, this is a disaster. I, I wouldn't play him. Um, and then let's look at some others, I guess. Um, Ludwig Klein, he's 9,600. You know what you have to do at 9,600? Especially when there's just no good underdogs. He's minus a thousand. I imagine he has a big inside the distance line. Yeah, so Clyde inside the distance is minus three fifty. So this is going to look like the best. I imagine, like if you look at this, Ludwig in round one plus one sixty, and that's probably what you're going to need. So if you're going to start prioritizing these under these favorites, I guess we're going to start with him. And we'll start with him. We'll see if anybody's better. But but Asherat, I, I I don't think so. Then, uh, and no, I'm not playing guys that are plus 900 to win. I just, I just don't do it. We talked about Oliveira. All right, so Eric Anders, 9,300 against Jamie Pickett. Um, okay. He's minus 500. That's great. So that means we can't play Jamie Pickett. Inside the distance, what does it mean? Plus 120? Ugh. At, at that price? I mean, it's a pass, isn't it? I don't know. You guys are saying, well, sheets, what do I know? I don't, it seems like a pass to me. Um, all right. Ur Urseg against Matt Schnell, another minus 10 million. So, which means we probably can't play the Schnell side. He just doesn't win off, just doesn't win off it enough. And his price being 9,200. He better have an inside the distance line of minus 120 or something. Plus maybe some takedowns. Let, let, let's see. Urseg. Plus. No. This kid. No, there you go. Okay, so this is fun. Urseg inside, minus 140. Plus he's got some takedowns. All right, so this is fun. So Urseg's a good favorite. Klein's a good favorite. No thanks to to to... Uh, what's his name? Anders, and no thanks to Bashara, at least right now. All right. Um, Umar Nurmagomedov, literally minus 1,000, which means we can't play the other guy. Is there any, I mean, would I, how can I play a 9700 hour fighter? I mean, he's got to be like, he's got to finish in the first round with, 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 with takedowns, I mean, it's just it's just the pricing is, is brutal. It's inside the distance line isn't even that great, like minus 180. In, in the first round, it's, what is this? Plus 200? I mean, I don't know, pass? That sucks, but it's hard. It's hard. So as far as these favorites go, so far, again, it was probably Klein and Ethan Urseg and passing for now on Anders and Umar and and, um, and Basharat. But obviously Duncan, this is the cheapest. We're, we're, we're minus, we're minus of him, by the way. Minus 160. So again, so it's the cheapest of them, I guess. So it's Duncan. Klein, well, actually Klein's not cheap. So Duncan Klein and Urseg are good. Basharat and Umar and Anders, I would pass. 
Now we get to Muhammad Makayev, who's my, minus 350. Alex Perez, plus 300. I mean, I guess Perez, I could play him, maybe, just because he has an okay chance to win. The problem here is on the other side of this. I mean, you have Mokayev, his price is what? Um, where is his price? He's, he's 9,100. All right, so he's either got to be minus 110 inside the distance or a whole bunch of takedowns and control time and, and not ground the kind of stuff. And the problem here is that, let's see, he's inside the distance line. Well, I shouldn't say that now. So his inside the distance line isn't bad. Yeah, so minus 130. All right, so this is going to be a fight. So he not only has takedowns, but he also has an inside the distance line that's worth discussing. So this is good. So now, so his inside the distance line look good, looks good. His price is cheap, which also means that that kind of brings Perez into play, right? And because not only is his opponent have good metrics, but he, of these 7,200s, is probably, you know, has the best chance to, to do something. So I think Perez is probably my favorite. Well, him and Ribeiro are my two favorites of these, of these you know, cheap underdogs. Well, though, let's look at this last one. So, oh, so now we have another. So Petrino against Pedro. I presume that Petrino has a strong inside the distance prop. Yeah, he's minus 130 or so. And his is 9K. So this is another strong play. So that being the case, we have to look at the other side. Petri Pe Pedro, pretty decent money line. And if you look at his inside the distance line, oof, plus 400. Ugh. I guess because, like I said, I guess because Mokayev is... Not mm -hmm. because um, Petrino's metrics are so good, people are going to play them. You get some good leverage with Pedro. Okay, so there you have it. So eleven fights. We we're able to identify the three mid-range fights that you're supposed to target, and then of those other what eight, found a couple of fades. I think right. I think that Basharat one's a fade. I think the Anders fight's a fade. It's three, two. I think the Umor fight's a fade. That's three. So you have three key fights, three fades. And then you have your choice of five of those big favorites. And I think that, or you could, again, you could, you could go ahead and, and, and game stack or, or fight stack. Um, so, and again, to, you know, summarize how much I like the favorites the most. I mean, these are all good. You know, Makayev and the opponent. Petrino and the opponent. Urseg, but not the opponent, because he just doesn't have a good enough chance to win. Klein, not the opponent, because he doesn't have a good enough chance to win. Fade Basharat, Fade Zahabi, and both of these guys. Now, again, we didn't look at ownership. We didn't look at the, how these things actually construct uh, and other little tricks of the trade, so to speak, you know, a little funny business that we can make to hopefully get unique. But that's it. That is the, the I guess, video one where we go over the best plays. Uh, we're going to do a betting breakdown, and we're also going to do a lineup construction video maybe later. Too. Good luck, everybody.